The events of this story take place in the year 2221, on a planet outside of Galaevka, where the technology of an advanced space civilization has crashed as low as level 5. It all starts with a ship that is in space. This was the Kingdom of Chain. The girl who is on the ship is named Jo, and she became a great master of Shanye at the age of 16, and is also the founder of a research institute. The girl also has outstanding medical skills present. The other day she was going to go to the lab to check the results, but there was an accident on the ship. One day, Jo was walking through the ship and suddenly heard some strange alarm sound. Then the doors opened and the other passengers said that everything was bad and they had to evacuate. Everyone started running away at once and someone even said that the capsule was about to explode. One of the girls who ran past Joe told her to get out of there because the lab was about to explode and it would be bad. However, the girl remained where she was. She replied that she couldn't do that because her experiments were still there and she couldn't just leave them like that. Then one of the guards said it was too late and the commander needed to be rescued. Joe didn't have time to do anything as their ship was suddenly engulfed in bright flames and she just watched this destruction. At this time, on one of the planets, a man who had gone outside to get some fresh air suddenly saw something falling in space. He assumed it was probably just a meteor. But at that moment, he was suddenly interrupted by calling out his name, Sen Shuji. An elderly man came out to him and asked if he would be back the next day. The guy came closer to him and told him that everything was right and that he was going on a blind date. The man was very surprised when he heard this because he didn't expect that from him. At that moment, Iho opened her eyes and she couldn't understand where she was. When she looked away, she saw another girl beside her. She already thought she was dead but when she saw some stranger beside her, she asked where she was and who the girl was. This girl immediately started telling her life story, how she was still an infant and had already been abandoned back then. Her name is Mujo. She's been a very bad student since she was a kid. Now she's the best at everything. Everyone insulted her at school, saying she was a very bad student and dressed like a loser girl. Many people wondered for what sins the Mu family had raised such a daughter. It went on like that until one day the hospital where the girl was born called. The woman was very surprised when she heard the news over the phone and asked how it could be that something was wrong with her child. Joe reached her and anxiously asked if she had something wrong, but the woman looked at her with hatred and told Tanya to call her mom, and no wonder she had grown up ugly playing loop and because she couldn't do anything right, she wasn't worthy to be her daughter. From that day on, absolutely everything changed. The attitude they used to have in their family was no longer the same. Her father scolded her all the time. One day he brought a dirty plate and told her that she was already a daughter of the family in years, and his precious daughter was nowhere to be found. Then the woman couldn't take it anymore and told the girl to leave their family. She also said her mom had an easy-going mom and fattened up her daughter with an imposter, the whole family with weirdness they had. And then one day, the real daughter of the family, Muses an incredibly beautiful and young girl, came back to them. And Joe, of course, had to leave. Soon she was able to find her real mother. She was a poor, fallen woman to whom everyone said all sorts of nasty things. When the girl saw her daughter that tears came to her eyes, she was incredibly happy to see Ye Joe and said that she was her mother. Since then, she has been living with her mother. In order to support herself, she had to work in the worst place imaginable and sell her body for money. However, the clients were always dissatisfied. They used her services, but insulted her by saying that she looked disgusting. Men fulfill their needs, and afterward they said she couldn't work, for there was a better place for her, which was the circus. Many also sentenced her that she was so ugly that they were even discounted to take her. Every time the girl came home after her clients, she had a lot of bruises all over her body. When her mother saw all this, she asked in surprise, did they make her do it? But Yejo was desperate and said that there was nothing she could do about it because her mother was a girl of easy virtue. 
so it's okay for her to follow in her footsteps. Soon everything changed, and the girl found herself on the street. Many people passed by and called her names all the time. One day, a girl her age wanted to help her. She said that this girl is so poor she could give her money. A friend who was walking beside her said she was so kind. However, she should be careful, because this stray is probably sick with something. This girl turned out to be the real daughter of the Moo. She smiled and told the girl to take the money, because in the next life she would be a good aunt, and advised her not to try to climb high branches in vain. When Joe listened to her story, she asked in surprise, Does she really have the same name? However, the girl lowered her eyes and said in a quiet voice that she was just a fake nobody, and everyone would be perfectly happy if she died, except her real mother, of course. She said that everyone felt that the eyesore was finally gone. But her own mother had been mourning her all this time. It must have been very painful for her to give birth to a child like her. And when Joe lost her life, she could see her mom suffering through the special screen. Apparently, she was really sorry to lose her daughter. However, the girl confidently, looking somewhere in the distance, said that she does not have the strength to live this worthless life again so she is even glad that it is all over. Then Joe suddenly looked at the second girl and said she had a huge favor to ask of her. She nodded and asked what she wanted. Joe asked that if she gave her body to her, she could go back to the beginning and change everything so that her real mom would never cry again and never have to feel that awful feeling again. Joe, however, looked at her in surprise and asked, why doesn't the girl just do it herself? She explained that she had already traded her soul for the fact that she was the one who had come into this world and was about to disappear. So Joe put her hand over her heart and asked that she help her mother and not make her cry. The girl smiled and told her to become E. Joe. After that, she added that it would be much easier for her since they had the same name. Joe thought for a while. Then she held out her hand and said that so-and-so would help her and as Ijo would grant her wish. And from that moment on, the girl became Yejo, an ordinary girl who mistakenly fell into the luxurious Mew family to get rid of the pain that was inflicted on her and live her life all over again. A moment later, the girl moved into a new body. She breathed heavily for a while, not realizing what was happening. However, then looking around and looking in the mirror, she realized that this was probably Joe's world. The girl assumed that she was still the daughter of the family at this time. When she approached the luxurious closet, she realized that this was indeed the case. Opening it, she grabbed the first thing off the rack and thought that it was the kind of clothes that killed her sense of style. However, wearing this sweatshirt, she thought that since it had become her, it would help her deal with the pain and guilt she had been hiding all this time. Soon, Joe started down the stairs and heard loud music. As she looked around, however, she didn't understand why there were so many people outside and assumed that it was probably the Moo family having a big banquet. However, when she saw all the disgruntled looks from the guests, she realized that apparently it was just about the time the real daughter of their family was officially returning. The people, closely following Joe's gaze, understood why she still hadn't come downstairs and her face was like a palette of colors of some kind. Many people did not even know that she was the fake daughter of the family. And then they praised the wife of the family, who was so good-natured that she still kept this girl in her house. Joe realized that, apparently after the return of the so-called true daughter, everyone had just turned their backs on her. But at that moment, Mrs. Mu, a girl named Shen Rong, suddenly approached her. She looked at her and angrily asked her if she hadn't told her to clean up before dinner started. She glared at Joe and started yelling, telling her to at least have a conscience. After all, they still hadn't kicked her out, even though they knew the truth. At that moment, a girl's voice was heard. She addressed Shen Rong, calling her mommy. The woman immediately paid attention and happily ran up to her. After that, she pointed at Yun with her hand and told everyone that this was the real daughter of the Mu family her own bloodline. However, the girl looked at Joe in surprise and asked her mother, who is this stranger? Joe thought at this moment that it was not surprising since they had already met Yoon when she came. However, now she was pretending not to know her just to humiliate her. 
Then her mom replied that it was Mujo and said she had seen her before. The girl at that moment suddenly screamed and said that she was the one who stole her identity and was next to her mom. After that, she asked her mother if she liked this girl. If yes, it's okay, and she will tolerate her. The woman hugged her daughter and said she was so kind she had grown up and smiled at her. At that moment she looked at Joe and thought that it was all because of her that she was not her daughter. But somehow she was still in their house. Joe, in fact, paid absolutely no attention to them. She went to the tables where the food was and thought she was really hungry, so she needed a little something to eat. At this point, the men who were sitting on the balcony watching all this were amazed. One of them said that this show was incredible and asked what about the true and false daughter. Then he turned to his friend and said that his fiancée was looking at them and he was not reacting in any way. This guy was the son of the Li Chiang Dong family. However, his friend didn't say anything about it. He just sat there and watched the whole thing. Then suddenly Joe spoke. She turned to all the guests and apologized for interrupting their party. However, the girl replied that she had actually come to tell Auntie Mu that she was on her way out and would not give her any more trouble. When the guests heard this, they were very surprised. They could not believe that Joe had really said she was leaving. The girl did not pay attention to their words and went straight to the exit. Li Chiang Dong was shocked. He said the fake daughter said she was leaving and asked her friend if they hadn't said she would stay. But then he thought about it and said that basically compared to the real one, this Joe looks just awful. Her face was covered with red and green paint. In his opinion, she looked completely unattractive and even ugly. He then shifted his gaze to Yun and said that fortunately, the real daughter looked very even. Otherwise, one would have to marry that ugly and strange Joe. However, the guy still didn't answer him anything to that. He looked serious enough. After that, he shifted his gaze to Li Changdong and threateningly told him to keep quiet if he wanted to pass as an Uduvo. The boy, when he heard this, was very surprised. In fact, the fifth brother even frightened him with those words. At this moment, Yun suddenly looked at Zhou and thought that she might have changed. However, she pushed those thoughts away from her afterward thinking that she was probably wrong, and this girl was every bit as stupid and ugly as she had been in her previous life. That's right. Yoon was reborn and returned to the family at the beginning of this life in order to control that idiot Ye Jo beforehand. In her past life, she was married to a simply horrible man and was bullied and humiliated by him. So she died a miserable death. However, in this life, Yoon has to keep her connection with Jo no matter what, and wants her to marry that tyrant instead of the girl herself. When Zhou was about to leave, Yun suddenly smiled and asked her to stop for a while. At that time, the girl approached her and said that she knows that she doesn't really want to return to the family. However, she was just disgusted with the luxurious life of the Mu family. She tried to stop Yun from returning to the family and ruined it. The girl hugs her mother and tells her that Zhou has ruined her life for a whole 18 years, but she couldn't let her hurt her parents. Yoon looked her in the eye and told Joe to stay and stop arguing and that they should treat their parents well together. That way, they would repay them for raising them and asked if the girl agreed to that. Joe was silent at this point. She just stared at her and heard people start to chatter. Many people said that Yoon is an incredibly kind person and no matter what, this girl is willing to accept such a person because she doesn't want her parents to feel bad. And compared to her, Jo is just a shameless and ungrateful daughter and also has poor blood flowing in her veins. Yun at this moment thought that the best way was to make her angry so that she would say something nasty. And the very next day, the whole town will know how kind and generous she is and how greedy and nasty this Ejo is. But at that moment, the girl suddenly covered her mouth with her hand and started giggling. Yoon asked her what she was laughing about when she saw that. Jo looked very serious. She looked at her and said that first of all, it was the maternity hospital that had ruined her life for 18 years, not her. And secondly, since she wants Jo to stay and repay her family for raising her, she asked if she could stay with her birth mother to repay her for her kindness to her. Yoon, when she heard this, was shocked. She even blushed, not expecting such a thing. She thought that this girl in front of her was obviously Ye Jo. 
However, she didn't understand why she was acting differently. Then suddenly Joe continued talking and said that it means that Miss Moo also hates her family's poverty and she doesn't want to give up the wealth and honor of the Moo family. Li Qiangdong, who kept watching all of this, smiled happily and said that this Ye Zhou was insanely interesting. Yoon realized at that moment that she had to keep playing the victim role. So she cried and said that the girl had gone too far because she just wants Joe to hurt her family. She wants Joe to get along with her mom and dad, and she doesn't understand why the girl would say such horrible things. Yuna said that of course she suspected that she had such a bloody heart, but to have it so bad. And at this moment, she cried even more. Shen Rong immediately hugged her daughter and said that Joe was a very bad girl. Joe did not react to all their emotions. She turned away and said that Mrs. Moo loved her and she really wanted to go back to her real mother. So asked that the girl take care of her on her own and not to worry about Joe taking anything away from her because she didn't including, she is not going to even touch their non-existent love. At this point, Yoon's mother couldn't take it anymore. She started shouting loudly and told the girl to leave. She would leave right now and wouldn't even take anything with her. Jo only smiled bitterly and replied that she was quite willing to leave even on those terms. The girl herself at this point thought that there was really nothing in this house worth taking with her, so she headed for the exit. Joe, as she passed the balcony, suddenly looked at the two guys sitting there and thought that just now the view from above was very oppressive. It was as if that man was watching a fight between two fierce lions. At that moment, a man suddenly came out to them. It was Mu Dabin, the head of the family. He said that there was no reason to say that. He looked at Joe and told her to be sure to sign the letter of abdication when she had thought it over. The man looked very tense and said that, in fact, he didn't want her to show up later and get them in trouble for anything. Joe didn't answer anything to that. She just looked at him briefly. After that, she went on her way. In fact, the letter of renunciation of inheritance in China is of great importance because adopted daughters are entitled to inheritance in families. People thought it was the right thing to do. And since Ye Zhou was going to tear the family apart, she needed to sign a letter of disinheritance to save the family from being divided in the future. At this moment, Mu Dabin handed her a piece of paper. As Jo studied it, she realized that the Mu family's foster parents had prepared all the rejection documents in advance. The girl started to sign the documents. And Yoon, who was watching all this, thought that she used to hold on so tightly to the chance to stay in the Mu family. However, she doesn't understand why she's now in such a hurry to sign the application to end their relationship. The guests present were also shocked that she was actually going to sign this document. At that moment, Jo suddenly felt again the horrible feeling she had just a short time ago. She turned back and saw that the man was looking directly at her, and it was indeed the dark-haired guy who had been sitting next to Li Qiangdong all this time. Suddenly, he got up from his seat without taking his gaze off the girl and told him for them to leave already. The guy, hearing this, was very surprised and afterwards asked if he wasn't going to meet the real daughter of the family that day, or if he wasn't interested in this beautiful and lovely bride. Then they headed towards the exit, and Li Qiangdong kept pelting him with questions, asking if he already had a girlfriend he liked. The boy looked at him seriously, and answered in a quiet voice that there was no one in his heart and would not be, and in general it was none of his business, so he asked not to ask any more of these stupid questions. Li Qiangdong, hearing this, was not too surprised, after all. He had heard this indifferent, none of your business from the guy before. However, since he had met the fifth brother, he had never seen him show any intimacy with girls, and his only favorite occupation, other than work, was going to the temple. The guy pondered for a while as to why things were the way they were, and then an idea popped into his head. Li Qiangdong guessed that perhaps the only person he loved was God. He felt ashamed at that moment, because he didn't understand why he hadn't thought of it before. They continued to walk on, and at this time at the meeting, Joe had already finished signing all the documents and also headed for the exit. Yoon was surprised when she saw that she didn't expect the girl to just leave like that. But then suddenly, her mother came up to her and cheerfully told her that she was doing a good job, 
because she had removed the eyesore. So she suggested that we just forget about it and continue celebrating. Yun was still a little surprised. However, she thought that it was okay and she had nothing to worry about because she was now in the real Mu family and could bully that little idiot Joe whenever she wanted. Ye Zhou had picked up her bag by then and walked out of the manor gates. The gates slammed shut, leaving her life behind. Afterward, the girl immediately took the familiar road to her mother's house. When she knocked, a young girl opened the door. When she saw Joe on her doorstep, she was a little surprised and guessed who it might be. Joe, however, still smiling happily, said her name and, turning to her mother, replied that she was already back. Joe apologized to her mother for everything she had just been through and told her that she was her real daughter. However, half an hour had already passed since their meeting, and the woman was still crying and could not calm down and believe these words. Then Joe suddenly turned to her and told her mother in a quiet voice that she was thirsty. The woman was immediately distracted from her expectation and replied that she would bring her some water. As she went into the kitchen, Joe looked around and thought about the fact that this house had been counted for years. Soon the woman brought her a glass of water and told her to drink some. Joe, taking it in her hands, smiled happily and thanked her mommy for it. Suddenly, however, the woman cried again. The girl had already asked what her problem was. One cat replied that it was nothing. However, she actually remembered the first time Joe had come to her house. The first time Joe was at her place, she was very much cranky. The girl poured a glass of water on the floor and said that she actually washes her face with avian. And the woman giving her this horrible water must be trying to poison her. Afterwards, Joe claimed that she was not her mother. After all, she can't have a shameful mother like her. And now, even though her makeup is still very thick, this time her skin still burns. Suddenly, Joe turned to her and asked if there was a bathroom at home because she wanted to freshen up a bit first. The woman, smiling with tears in her eyes, said she would take her there and thought she was feeling much better now than before. And that was a very good thing. Soon Joe was alone in the bathtub and using makeup remover as well as coloring cream. She stood under the hot water and thought about the fact that she absolutely had to wash off the heavy makeup on her face and the bright paint she had on her hair. After all, she couldn't go on like this. When Joe finished her bath, she put on a shirt and looked in the mirror and thought that she, Joe, could use a return to her former natural look. She then turned her attention to the shirt and thought about the fact that the fabric was very rough and her skin reacted to it. It made her feel uncomfortable. Then, she tied back her hair to keep the shadows out of her eyes and thought about how this body was more tender than she thought so she needed to find a way to make money to improve her family's situation as well as her health. At this time, Joe came out of the bathroom as she suddenly heard the front door open and an unfamiliar man walked in. He addressed his sister cheerfully and said that he had already returned. The man was Yi Sen, the younger brother of Yi Shu, Joe's mother. He had many different packages in his hands and he cheerfully turned to her and told her that he was able to find a lot of delicious everything. However, when he saw Joe, he was very surprised and asked his sister who this beautiful girl was, joked that it was his niece, turning to his daughter, said it was her uncle. Joe, smiling as sweetly as possible, greeted her uncle. The girl, after showering and washing off her makeup, was really incredibly beautiful. When Sen looked at the girl, he couldn't just believe his eyes. He wondered if she was really Mujo. After that, he asked what had happened to her face, why it looked normal. In fact, he remembered that her face used to be painted with various bright colors, and he still felt bad that she was so beautiful without all that makeup. However, Joe smiled at that moment and said that she was no longer Mujo now, but Ijo. Then the man looked at her worriedly and asked if she was up to any more shenanigans, this was apparently of great concern to him. Then Yi Sen, without waiting for an answer, turned to his sister and whispered to her to be careful of this wolf in sheep's clothing. After all, no one knows what she is up to. At this point, Joe remembered that the original mistress of this body had done a great deal to ruin her relationship with her uncle. So it wasn't surprising that he'd reacted that way. However, Joe smiled and said it was her fault. She knew what she did was wrong, so she apologized. 
Yi Sen still didn't trust her and said in a very serious voice that if she dared to hurt his sister, he wouldn't let her go. Yi Shu turned to her brother and said that Zhou is her own little girl, so she has no reason to bully her. However, the man whispered turned and said that he couldn't be sure, because she might turn out to be just like Mu Yun, a heartless girl. Yi Shu was sick of hearing all these conspiracy theories from her brother, so she went to get the bedding and told Yi Sung that there were noodles in the pot, so he could help himself, and she would make Yi Zhou's bed for now. However, the girl came over and took the bedding from her mother, telling her not to bother because the girl could do it herself. Yi Shu was incredibly happy to see her daughter like this, and once again couldn't contain her emotions, so she cried. Joe reached close to her and told Mommy in a quiet voice that she would be a good daughter now. In fact, that was exactly what she had promised the real Joe, and the girl would not let her ever be sad again. Yi Sen was aggressively eating his noodles at this moment and thought about the fact that it was definitely possible to change his clothes. However, personality no, he would still be very attentive to this girl. The man knew he had to be careful that this bad Joe didn't hurt his own little sister, who takes everything so personally. At this time, Moo Mansion was calm. Everyone there was already getting ready for bed, and Yoon's mother was showing her to her room. Shen Rong walked over to the dressing room and told her to look at the new clothes in her room, and if she didn't like them, she would definitely change them. However, she began to look at the outfits, and after thanking her mommy, said that she liked everything very much. The woman smiled and replied that she was very happy about it. Afterward, she left the room and said goodnight to her daughter. She also said goodnight to her mother, and afterward lay down on the luxurious and wide bed, thinking that she liked it very much. At this moment, she thought that it was a pity that this little idiot, E, had just run away. However, still, she was just a lowlife now. So Yoon's finger would be enough to crush her. Yoon now realized that she needed to find that man, the fiancé of her in her past life, the one who had been at the peak of power and made it fall at her feet. At this very time, when it was finally dark outside and many of the town's inhabitants had gone to bed, Yi Sen suddenly began to leave the house. He opened the front door as carefully as possible so as not to wake anyone, and when he stepped outside, he exhaled with relief, thinking that everything had gone well. He did not notice, however, that Joe was right behind him. She turned to her uncle and asked him where he was going in the middle of the night. Sen was very frightened, for he had not expected her to follow him, so he jumped up and down in surprise. He was about to shout when suddenly Joe covered his mouth to keep him quiet. If his mother found out, they wouldn't both get out of it and they wouldn't be able to justify the situation. After this she let him go, and Yi Sen looked at her sadly and told her to go away, for he was a beggar who did not deserve to be her uncle. He turned around and walked on, telling her to go back to her bed and leave him alone. However, Joe wasn't even going to do that, and after a while, the man turned around to see if she had left or not. However, when he saw her, he asked why she was following him. Had she really lost her mind? However, Joe calmly replied that his name wasn't actually written on that road, and if he could walk, she could quietly walk too. In fact, the girl remembered that one of her uncle's hobbies was visiting the same place, which was exactly what she needed in this situation. Yi Sen switched from fast walking to running, in order to at least get Joe to stop following him. However, she ran too. Soon they came to a very expensive area of the city, namely the Yunqin Royal Club. Even though it was already quite dark outside, there were still a lot of people walking around this club. Yi Sen started to enter the building and told the girl to stop following him and go home. Joe's attack certainly didn't obey him. She looked at the sign and thought it was a very nice place. She was going to make a lot of money there and take the first step to changing the real Joe's life. So at this point, the girl put aside all her doubts and went inside the royal club. There were many different slot machines, as well as poker tables. Yi Sen, who had already taken his seat and made certain bets, watched the game. He really wanted the great Buddha to bless him and make his luck change. Joe approached him from behind at that moment and heard him muttering something quietly. He said that when he made a lot of money, he would burn a blessing and donate the money to Buddha. Suddenly, however, 
his uncle felt someone standing behind him watching. He turned around, and when he saw Joe, he was very surprised. He turned to her and asked her what she was even doing. However, the girl was completely calm and replied that she was just watching the game. The girl herself at this point realized that this uncle is a gambler. However, judging by the way they live with him, one can definitely not expect luck, and there is no money to be made. Isen kept shouting and told her to go home already, for he had told her a thousand times already. However, the girl turned around, because she was not going to cooperate with people with a difficult character. He stepped closer to her at this point and grabbed her shoulder and told her that this club was actually no place for a little girl. Joe, that made her very angry. She looked at him with the harshest look she could muster and thought maybe he should have his hands cut off and his tongue cut off so he wouldn't talk so much. She had no time to answer him, however, when suddenly the other players approached them. One of the men said that if they wanted to fight, they should go somewhere else. And if they wanted to play, they should play normally, observing all the rules and norms of behavior. Isen immediately made an innocent face and replied that of course he was playing, and added that he was making a small bet. Joe, who was standing not far from them, heard the whole thing and said that if she were him, she would have bet on three, one, and four. Even though she is a gambling person and wouldn't mind seeing him embarrass himself and lose, however, she doesn't want Yi Shu's brother to just lose all his money. Yi Sen looked at her in surprise and asked her what small bet meant by those numbers. He then began to shake the dice and said he was betting on more. So he bet the big one three points more than one. Soon when he shook the dice, the wrong numbers were there. The man was furious. He didn't expect to lose because he was confident in his strategy. Then the girl who was watching the game asked if he would play another round. Would it be more or less? Yi Sen at this point took his niece by the hand and quickly began to ask her whether she was betting for more or less. Joe, without even looking at him, replied that she didn't want to talk to gamblers who didn't even want to hear from family members. Uncle started yelling and said that he wanted to argue that it wasn't. However, if it was treating his sister so well, then he wouldn't have any questions either. Joe, when she saw his distressed face, was very surprised. It was something she didn't understand. Was there really something else going on? He kept looking around and talking to someone. Then the girl decided to take pity on him and coming closer, said she would help him once. Joe was silent for a while, listening to the various sounds. And after that, she told him to bet on the smaller ones, one, two, and two. Yi Sen really didn't want to obey her. However, he took out the money from his wallet anyway and said he would do it. After that, he voiced his bet to the girl. Soon, the cubes were shaken, and when the lid opened, there were indeed just the numbers he needed. The other people present were shocked. They didn't expect that he could win this time, and those who lost thought they would not even be able to pay him back. But Yi Sen paid no attention to them at all. He took his winnings in the form of chips, which would later be exchanged for money, and was very happy, calling it a great victory. He then looked at his niece and asked what the next move should be big or small. Joe was not very happy to help him, but said the new numbers, and the man bet again. When the dice were rolled again and the right numbers were found, the man won a rather large sum of money again. All this time he was incredibly happy, and each time he took his winnings. Meanwhile, someone was watching him closely on the balcony. Of course, it was the fifth brother and his friend Li Chengdong. He turned to the man and said that he had won again, Apparently, this girl behind him is helping him somehow. When another bet was won, he also said it was just unbelievable. However, he didn't understand how she did it. After all, she managed to call the right numbers every time. But then suddenly, the fifth brother turned to him and asked in a cold voice if he didn't recognize her, continuing to watch the girl. Li Changdong then asked if he knew who she was and he himself wondered that such a beautiful woman had appeared in such a small town they lived in. So he speculated that perhaps she was the fate of the fifth brother. All this time they were watching Joe, who was helping her uncle earn money, but then suddenly the fifth brother said after some silence that it was the same E. Joe. He was actually surprised that the man didn't recognize her, 
But Li Qiangdong was incredibly surprised when he heard this. There was no way he could believe that this girl, who was now neatly and tidily dressed, was really the same Ye Zhou that he remembered. Then he took a closer look at the girl and asked if he really meant to say that she was the fake daughter of the family, kicked out of the house, and came to the club to look for a daddy. But at that moment, the guy realized that the most important daddy in this establishment is exactly the fifth brother, and perhaps she came just for him. This thought cheered Li Qiangdong up. However, the fifth brother looked at him at this moment and said that they should go now. After that, they began to leave. And when people saw this, they started whispering, talking about the fifth saying, everyone was saying that he was a great man. In fact, 12 years ago, Chen Haifeng, who was the head of the family, passed away from an illness. At that time, this guy was only 18 years old, and he had returned to the city from the capital with amazing business skills. He managed to turn his family into the number one family in China, and after a while, he became known more as Fifth Master Tseng. The girls chatted as he passed by. One of them said she had heard that he was a loner and did not socialize with women, but was devoted to Buddhism. Another said that she also heard that an old lady from the Tseng family was so afraid that he would leave the family. She even threatened him to commit suicide so that he would agree to marry the daughter of the Mu family. Li Chengdong heard their conversation as he passed by and thought that these girls didn't know anything about this matter and were just gossiping. However, the fifth brother had always been devoted to cultivation and had never been close to women. So this fake girl, Yejo, is most likely after him specifically. The boy decided that he should definitely guard the fifth brother, and he in turn should not let this witch fool him. A short time later, Joe, along with his uncle, also left the casino. At the exit, the guards thanked them for coming. Yes, Sen, who was carrying a lot of money in his hands, which even fell out of his hands along the way, asked his niece in surprise why they didn't continue after such a winning streak. However, the girl replied that everything should be moderated, especially since it was time for them to go back. But at that moment, as they were about to turn the corner, a man suddenly came up to them, blocking the way, and said, addressing Joe to take her time. There were two other friends standing behind him. One of them thought she was an incredibly beautiful girl, and he hadn't seen one like her in a long time. And the other turned to the panther's brother. Apparently, that was his nickname and said he wanted to buy him a midnight snack. Joe was serious. She thought about the fact that her face might cause some trouble, but she decided that it could be considered just another test in her difficult life. And then, when the man started to come closer to her to harass her, she hit him in the face. So he even flew back a few meters. Yes, Sen stood up for the girl, standing in front of her and shoving the other two aside. He asked who was even daring to bully his own niece. However, the guy who was still dizzy asked if he was crazy. Then, recognizing him as Sen's brother, he was very surprised and wondered if it was his niece. He had never actually heard of her before. Yes, Sen was still very angry. He told them in a menacing voice that this girl was actually his niece, so he asked that they change in front of her. The boys didn't want to have any more dealings with this man, for they were afraid of him. And then the three of them apologized at the same time. Joe was a little surprised at this behavior, but turned to her uncle and told them to go already. At that moment, she thought that maybe Ye Sung wasn't as bad as she thought. When the man heard her call him uncle, he became very indignant and asked her not to call him that. The girl realized at that moment that she had jumped to conclusions too soon. Afterward, she turned to him and asked him to give her some money he had received that day. Ye Sen was a little surprised. He replied to his niece that he would definitely give her a small amount of money. However, he asked why a little girl like her would need so much cash. The girl replied that her mom wasn't feeling well, so it was absolutely necessary to buy medicine for her. And they weren't cheap, really. Yes, Sen, upon hearing this, immediately pulled his winnings out of his pocket and said that if it was for his sister, he would give her all the money. Joe, seeing the huge stack of bills, wondered if he really trusted her that much. The man replied that he actually just thinks that she is not like Mu Yun, and he really hopes that he is right. So after looking Joe straight in the face, he asked her not to let him down. 
The girl smiled back at him and told her uncle that she would certainly do her best. A car started to pass by them, and Yesen said that it was time for them to head back or else his sister would suspect something. When Joe heard someone driving behind them, she turned slowly to see who it was and saw a fifth brother in the car. He in turn scrutinized the girl's features, and then he hummed in surprise. Li Chiang Dong, who was sitting behind the wheel and looked in the rearview mirror, was almost blinded by her beauty. He didn't understand how this could even happen. Then the fifth brother, after thinking about it, said that in fact, the real reason why the Tseng family had returned to the city was to spread the news of its financial crisis and bankruptcy. When his friend heard this, he was very surprised. He thought about the fact that the family had just become the number one band in the country and couldn't understand when they had already gone bankrupt. However, at this moment, the brother suddenly became very serious and said that the next morning, auntie and grandma would go to Mu's house to get acquainted. Li Changdong was very focused on the road. He himself said that he knew. It surprised him, in fact, that the fifth brother was using bankruptcy to find out the true essence of the bride-to-be. He even wondered if the fifth brother would go the next day in that mindset to meet his bride-to-be in person. At this time in the family home, Mu Yun was in her room. She was standing near the mirror and going through various outfits. The girl realized that tomorrow, there would be a very important guest in her family, and she should give her best, because it would be the beginning of her prosperous life. The next day, Joe's house was completely quiet. Even though it looked pretty shabby on the outside, it was pretty normal on the inside. Ye Shu had already been cooking in the kitchen since morning. She actually thought about the fact that Joe wasn't used to eating various porridges, so she decided to boil some eggs for her. But at that moment, Joe suddenly came home quickly. She was out of breath from running. When she opened the door, she turned to her mother and told her that she had already come home and bought donuts and meatloaves for breakfast. The woman immediately became worried, started to examine the bag, and asked where she got the money for all this. At this time, Yes Sung also woke up and came out of his room. He turned to his sister and told her not to worry because he had received a bonus this month thanks to his niece. Ye Shu, upon hearing this, was equally surprised. She turned around and looked at her brother and asked how this was even possible. The man walked over to Joe, and holding out his fist to her to say hello, told her that his niece was getting older, so she should be eating something nutritious. Joe smiled and answered him, shaking his hand, thanking her uncle. After that, she turned to her mother and told her to sit down and eat with them. Ye Shu was still in shock. The man at this moment thought that just a short while ago, she was a little wolf cub, and now she was his precious niece. Soon they all sat down at the table and began to eat breakfast. The woman turned to her brother and asked him why he was so suddenly kind to Joe. Maybe he had a fever, or had caught some kind of virus. However, Ye Sen looked at her with a smile and said that Joe was his niece, and if she wasn't going to be nice to her, then who was he supposed to be nice to in the first place? Ye Shu, of course, didn't believe his answer. She still suspected that he was pretending. However, she still didn't have any proof for now. Jo suddenly turned to her grandmother and said she loved the way she dressed. The woman looked and asked if she could go to the hospital together. However, the woman replied that she was fine and asked why the extra hospital fee was necessary if she was fine. However, the girl still insisted on her own way. She took her mother's hand and asked her to let her show her a technique she knew well. Qigong. Ye Shu was very surprised to hear this. She asked her daughter if she really knew Chinese medicine. Joe replied that she had only studied Qigong for a short time, but in her world it was one of her strongest skills. Real Ijo's mom looks absolutely horrible, and it's definitely not normal. So the girl started pressing various points on her arm. Joe at this point sensed weakness, coughing, lack of blood from her mother, and asked her if she had even donated blood. But when my uncle heard this, he suddenly became indignant and said that of course she wasn't renting it out, but she was selling it. The woman was about to object, but Ye Sung continued and revealed that a year ago, Mu Yun threatened a hunger strike to buy a fruity cell phone. The girl was throwing things around hysterically and tearfully, asking why she couldn't have a cell phone when everyone else had one. Mu Yun kept crying and complaining about her life, 
saying that all her classmates look down on her and she doesn't want to live like that anymore. And, terrified of failure, her sister found a dubious clinic and started selling her blood there in order to buy a phone for her, which only made her body weaker. However, when Yeshu was finally able to buy her a phone, the girl didn't even thank her, but just took the thing for granted. Mu Yun even offered his sister to sell her kidney to buy a house. And later on she went too far and started promoting Yeshu as a mistress. He really wondered how his sister could have a daughter like this horrible girl. Yi Sen suddenly lowered his head and said that if you think about it like that, such an ungrateful idiot couldn't be a member of their family. He looked very angry and couldn't stop the rush of his emotions. However, yeah. Shu smiled and said in a calm voice that everything was fine now, and this nightmare was over, and they were no longer in danger. She looked at the two of them and said, smiling, that it was very good that their family was now together. Yi Sen wanted to say something, but he changed his mind, and Zhou just stared at her the whole time. The woman was even uncomfortable with her gaze. Zhou could not believe that this was the great maternal love. She'd only read about it in literature before, but never experienced it herself. Because in the future, children are raised completely differently. People use test tubes to create new life, artificial wombs to grow them, and a single parenting system for all children. The most gifted children grow up and occupy quite high positions. They will never know what a family is, because they will be busy all the time with their careers and the improvement of humanity. When they had new babies and people took vitals, they separated them into good and bad. That's why it was so amazing for Joe to realize that things were completely different in this world. Then suddenly Yi Shu came closer to her and placed her hand on her forehead, asking, Am I not well? And if she had a fever, her look was very worried. Joe put her hand to her cheek and replied in a calm voice that everything was all right. She thought to herself that she had an incredibly warm hand, the kind of hand that mothers have, full of love and care. A mother who is willing to do anything for her daughter has such a hand, and she may even sacrifice her life. Now Joe understood why the real girl had switched souls, for Mu Yun didn't deserve such precious motherly love. At this point, she started writing something down quickly on paper, and thought about how she could take it easy there. She would give her mom all the love she deserved. She then handed the paper to her mother and asked her to go to the hospital and take the prescription to her. Yi Shu was surprised to hear this and asked what she meant. However, Zhou said that she would accompany her to quit her job at the restaurant as early as tomorrow, for her health was in great danger and peril. Yi Sen, who was still with them, was very surprised and thought, is it really all so serious that she even needs to quit her job? What really worried him was not the lack of money, but the fact that his sister might be seriously ill. However, she turned to him and told him not to let the child's words scare him. The man shook his head and said that she was strange, but he still trusted her. Joe then told her mother not to worry about the money and that she had borrowed several thousand dollars from her classmates because she planned to buy some stock in the future and pay it all back. Yi Shu, upon hearing this, was incredibly surprised. She asked, Does her daughter really want to become a shareholder? and participate in all these machinations? It was then that Yi Sen. He said that his sister didn't have to worry about money either, because he would also help. Then he took out his wallet and said that it was his salary and bonus for the previous day. And from now on, he would give her the entire monthly salary. The girl finally decided for herself that she could no longer allow her mother, Yi Jo, to work like this. She must have as good a vacation as possible so she went to her mother and told her that if she insisted on working, she would leave home at once. The girl was absolutely serious in her words. But at that moment, Yi Sung suddenly ran up to her and began to hug her, shouting at her not to leave, for it had been a long time since their family had been reunited, and they could not part so easily. Afterward, he turned to his sister and asked that she promise her. Yi Shu still didn't understand what was going on, However, she quickly said that she would promise, because such a scandal made her uncomfortable. Joe at this point pulled her uncle away from her waist and said that she would go with her tomorrow to process her resignation and supervise everything properly. At this time, there was a scandal, 
or rather even an argument in the Mu mansion, in the office of the head of the family. Mu Dabin turned to his wife and said that there are rumors that the target's family is going through a financial crisis and will soon go bankrupt. He also said that apparently it was indeed true. His wife, when she heard this, was incredibly surprised. She asked how this could have happened at all. She kept shouting and said that their family was just arriving that day. Surely they wanted to talk about their fifth son's wedding to little Yoon. She replied firmly that they couldn't let him marry her. He agreed with her and said they were talking about marriage out of the blue, probably wanting to use it to make up for their financial situation. They were talking so loudly that Yun, who was passing by the office, inadvertently heard them talking and stopped, for she heard her name as well. The girl couldn't believe what she had just heard. She didn't understand how it could have happened that the Tseng family had gone bankrupt. She realized that it was probably all because she had been reborn, and the fate of those around her had also changed. However, she was reborn to live a blissful life, not to suffer. Yoon has decided that she will marry a better and worthy man, and bankrupt Tseng is certainly not good enough for her. At that time, the girl walked over to them and turned and asked them if they thought that the Ken family was like a toad trying to eat a swan. They are definitely not a couple with them. Shen Rong, when she saw her daughter, was very surprised and asked if she had really heard all this. The girl nodded and said that they should think about her proposal. Then the woman told her not to worry because Mommy and Daddy knew all about it. At this moment, a maid suddenly walked in and, turning to Mr. and Mrs., said that the members of the Seng family had already arrived. When Yoon heard this, she was very surprised that they had come so quickly, and she thought to herself that this man would definitely not succeed, and he would not marry her. She would easily kick him out. The next day, Joe quickly got ready and even wore the new clothes her mom had bought her, and she turned to her and told her to get out early and go to the diner and quit her job. Ishu looked very anxious. However, she smiled gently at her daughter and said that she would do so. But then Joe suddenly told her mother that she had promised her. Joe looked her right in the face and told her that if she didn't start taking care of herself, she would be very sad, and asked, Does mommy really want her own daughter to be sad? Of course, after such arguments, Ishu couldn't refuse because her daughter is so caring and she doesn't want to upset her. So the two of them set out to go to the diner and fire her mom from there. But when they went out into the street, passers-by immediately started looking at them and talking to each other. They said that Yeshu's real daughter was incredibly beautiful, just like her mother. Only many people felt sorry that she wasn't a welcome illegitimate daughter. People didn't understand why a woman like Yi Shu worked in that horrible field. But at that moment, Joe took her hand and told her mother that they didn't need to explain anything to these people, because they didn't need to be afraid of these senseless judgments. Yi Shu immediately felt a little better from these words, and she smiled at her daughter and said that it was really not necessary to do so. Soon they came to a diner where a woman was working. When the owner heard this, she was very surprised. She said that if Yi Shu quit now, there would be no one to work, and the holidays were coming up. Joe, who was just talking to the mistress, offered to work in her mother's place for a month and asked the mistress how she felt about such an offer. The girl then told the landlady that she would give her time to recruit in this way and asked if she would agree to such terms. The cafe owner did not think for a very long time. She immediately said that certainly she could. Thinking that this is a cute girl, will be able to attract a lot of customers, and also added that they have a special uniform so the girl can try it on. At this time in Mu Mansion, the hosts had already stepped into the hallway to greet their guests. Mu Dabin was in front. He saw the two women and asked why they didn't warn him. He would have met them earlier and taken them to the mansion. These guests were Mrs. Quen and Ju Chen, Chen Shaoqin's mother. They smiled and said that he shouldn't have done that because they had come because of the children. In fact, more than 20 years ago, the Mu family was on the verge of bankruptcy, and Sung Haifeng, who was the patriarch of the family, provided funds to support Mu, and in order to pay quid pro quo, he promised then to marry his child. At this moment, they walked further and sat down on the sofa, and he in turn thought about how the Tseng family used to be completely different. But suddenly, 
they all turned their attention to something else, because Yun walked into the room just like that. She smiled as she greeted the guests. Her mother came over to her and told her to go over and meet the elder of the Tsung family. The girl nodded at her. After that, she approached the old lady and said hello and asked her how she was doing. Granny immediately smiled happily and said she was a very pretty girl and thought she would be a perfect match for their fifth. However, Yun was angry when she heard those words, but she immediately realized that she wasn't alone right now, so she hid her anger with a smile. Then she turned to the woman and said that she was only 18 years old and didn't want to think about adulthood and marriage yet. After all, she was not good enough for their master. Zhu Chen looked at the girl carefully at this moment and thought about the fact that with a look like that, as she said, she certainly didn't inspire confidence. However, the old woman waved her hand and said that she was a perfect match. And now that the marriage issue had been settled, she would personally make sure that Tseng Shaoqing would marry her. Yun was even more angry when she heard this. She thought that this old woman was completely blind because it was obvious that their chin was definitely not good enough for her. Then, the girl arrogantly said that since both heads had already arrived, she would clarify the situation. And, she said that she wanted to study, so she'd better cancel their marriage contract, because it was definitely not the feudal era of arranged marriages anymore. When the women heard this, they were very surprised. They could not have thought that she would propose to dissolve the marriage. Ju Tseng didn't understand. If they didn't keep their promises, then what would the Chenzin family on such a small Mu family for? And she was surprised that this girl had such a look as if she despised them for something. Mu Dabin, who had been watching silently all this time, mentally praised his daughter and thought that she could read his mind. After that, he turned to the guests and said that since she didn't want to, their parents couldn't force her. So he suggested that they just forget about the marriage as if it never happened. But the woman looked at him and said that refusing marriage is not child's play and there is a long-standing friendship between their families. However, the man was not going to listen to her anymore. He put his arm around his daughter and said that they had already made it clear. At this moment, Kei Yun said that she was an intelligent woman, so there was no need to pretend to be so ignorant. The guests didn't understand what was going on and why the Mu family said that the Chen family was out of their reach. Mu Dabin said they are in a financial crisis now and have helped his family in the past. However, they cannot blackmail them by demanding payment. The older woman guessed that was probably why they wanted to break off their engagement. After that, she asked, What is the Mu family going to do about it? Mu Dabin turned to the maid at this moment and gestured for her to bring out the suitcases. The maid immediately started carrying the suitcases. Then the man set them down and opened them to show two suitcases with a huge amount of money. He said that when the Mu family was going through a crisis, his brother had given them 10 million as emergency aid, and now he wants double payment, so these two suitcases should cover all the debts. The guests looked at each other, wondering what they should do now. Afterwards, the old lady said that since the family did not want to get married, they would not force them to do so. Ju at this moment took the medallion that marked their transaction and turning to the man, said that he was an ungrateful rascal. Afterward, she threw that chip at his feet and told him they didn't want their dirt. Zhou was serious. She said that from now on the prenup would be annulled and there would be no more favors for their family. Yun wasn't alarmed. She was only happy about it. The girl smiled and told her aunt that it was better to let them take the money and not regret refusing so easily. And she thought to herself in that moment that she really didn't want anything to do with such a horrible family that wasn't even grateful. But Zhao only took the token that marked their bargain and said she would only take it. And then she took her mom under her arm and they left. When they were driving in the car, Joe kept complaining and said it was just outrageous. You can't just put up with it like that. However, her mom just smiled and said that everything that is not done is for the best, and it was very good that they saw their true colors until they gave the fifth brother to marry into this family. Ju was still incredibly angry. She said that marrying such a woman would simply ruin Shao King's life. And after that, she asked her mother if maybe they should go back to the capital. However, she looked out the window and said that Yunjing is their hometown. 
and she is in this place to choose a daughter-in-law for Shao King, who will be a hundred times better than that horrible Mu Yun, who only thinks of herself and her well-being. At that moment she thought of finding him a daughter-in-law who would make him fall in love with her. At that moment they suddenly passed the kebab shop where Joe worked. She carried an order in her hands and would approach passers-by, who might be interested in their products, telling them that it was 10% off that day, so they were inviting them to try it. And when the old woman saw her, she almost fell in love. She thought she might be the perfect candidate for him. But then suddenly, Ju saw her staring at something and asked what was going on. The woman immediately turned away and said it was nothing. She herself at that moment was thinking of Joe, who was incredibly beautiful. The old woman suggested that she would make a wonderful wife for her grandson, and they would have incredibly beautiful children. At this time, the fifth brother was sitting in his room, thinking about the fact that his mom and grandma had gone to move family and should be back soon, so he felt uneasy. However, at the same time, he also wondered what they had decided after all. Some time later, as the sun was already setting, over the horizon the elderly women finally returned to their home. As soon as the doors opened, they were immediately greeted by a row of maids who told each other that the two mistresses had already returned. Mama Ju replied that apparently, starting tomorrow, she would have to travel around town more in search of a suitable daughter-in-law for her grandson. The woman, on hearing this, said she supported her, and then they would return to the capital in style. But then suddenly, the elderly woman asked her daughter, was it really she who had sent out the fake news about their family's financial crisis? She was really surprised at that time. She had never heard of such a thing before. However, Zhao was also surprised and said that she actually thought she did it. So no one knew who actually sent out the fake news. However, at this moment, Tseng Xiaoqing came out to meet them and said that it was him, and then asked how the Mu family reacted to such news. The ladies were surprised by such news so they remained silent for a while. However, after that his mom blurted out and said that they took this news just terribly. This family is incredibly evil. When they found out that the Tseng family was going through a financial crisis, they immediately abandoned them and broke off all engagement arrangements. She kept talking and said that she and her grandmother were so angry. However, when she saw her son's neutral face, she was surprised and asked why he did not react in any way. Qin Shaoqing smiled and said that he had actually told her that the daughter of the family was not suitable for him to marry. However, he and her grandmother had insisted on it themselves. His mom, when she heard that, got very angry. But it was really true, so she couldn't say anything to him or justify you in any way. Tseng Shaoqing kept talking and said that there was something more important in life besides getting married and having children. The grandmother who was watching at this time, realized that her grandson had started praying again, which meant that he was going to become a monk and never give her any great-grandchildren.